So I guess the, the next question leading on to this is what is going to be the implications for the EU? Because there's already a lot of discontent, you know, swimming around in countries like Spain, Italy, Greece, we've seen with the rise of populism. Do you think that if things go badly in Italy, that certain parts of the EU could disintegrate? So I was not someone who thought Brexit was a great idea in the sense that the most pressing problems of the British political economy would be addressed by leaving the EU, right? Mm. You're better off out of it. Because that's a shit show. It's a shit show. That's what I always said. Francis and I both voted Remain. But the one thing I always try to remind people on our side is you, you may think that leaving is not a good idea. But what you're failing to take into account is the long-term consequences of staying. What's the cost of staying? So the first canary in the coal mine for this was the defenestration of Greece through its banking system in 2015. Remember that summer when they were just limiting how much Greek people could take out of the ATMs just to totally undermine the government, right? So playing pure politics, right? Now, think about Southern Europe as a whole. They've barely come out of a 10-year-long recession. Right, all the how many Italians have you met in London? Loads, right? Why? Because they're not staying there because there's no jobs. So they all move to the countries that have the jobs, which means that the societies are older. The dynamic part of their population is already gone. They've got too much debt. They haven't grown in twenty years, right? And then the Eurocrats basically come along in the Corona moment and say, "Well, you know, we can't really go around bailing people out." It's like, well, hang on a minute, mate. The reason you're selling BMWs to the rest of the world is precisely because we are getting squeezed here in the South. You're running what economists call the external surplus. That means there has to be an internal deficit somewhere, and that's what we in Italy and France and Spain are meant to run. But you've got all these rules that say everyone has to run a balanced budget, which means that Italy's been running a surplus, budget surplus, for 20 years. Now, for all the people who say debt's a problem, you should run a surplus, look at the Germans. Well, actually, the Italians have run a surplus twice as long, and they haven't grown in 20 years. So your debt's not your problem. It's your lack of growth that's a problem. And how much responsibility does the euro have for this situation? Because to me, I'll, again, I'm not an economist, but to me, you've got all these different types of economies, like you said, based on you know, certain industries. And they've all got the same currency. That, to me, seems like a, a nonsense. Yeah, absolutely. And they've all got one interest rate. That's also a nonsense. There's absolutely no way that the interest rate that they've got is low enough for the Italians, and it's probably too low for the Germans. So it's look, the one way to think about it is you have natural economies because they adjust to shocks in different ways, right? So when you're hit with a big common shock like COVID, right, if you are national economies with national currencies... You can do your own thing. We, the Americans, certainly do our own things. We've fucked up royally, but we can do our own thing. If you're the Italians, very limited in what you can do because you don't have that printing press to respond to it. It's more rearranging those already stressed deck chairs on the Titanic. Then you think about the fact that you've got all these different business cycles, etc., that are linked to each other, and they become super linked because of the euro. So the countries that are growing, that grow in a certain way, like the Germans and the Eastern European countries, basically the supply chain goes from Eastern Europe into Germany. It's assembled as autos and machine parts and then sold to the Chinese and the Americans. That only works for them. That's not what's going on in Italy. They don't have a growth model. Would it be a good idea for them to get out? Yes, but then you get the Hotel California problem. You can check in, but you can never check out. So imagine, Constantine, that you're an Italian with money. And you, stop, my friend, stop stereotyping me. I know I look Italian, but <laughs> <laughs> believe me, I know Italians that look like Francis. Um, they're not. They're not all as suave and handsome as you are. Anyway, um, <laughs> I so love the way you good. managed to praise me and insult Francis in one sentence. That's what we like. Why making him feel good, which was even more bizarre. So I'm Italian. You're Italian with money, right? And you're Italian, and basically you're unemployed. You don't have any money. And along comes some populist and says, basta, we've had enough, let's get out of the euro. Because then we would be able to grow, we'd be able to devalue, we'd have our own currency, we could bail our own banks. You go, yes, that's brilliant. You say, this is the worst idea I've ever heard. Because all the assets that you have are in euros. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Germany and open up a bank account, because you can as an EU citizen. And you're going to move all your Italian euros, which are euro euros, into a German bank account. And that means when the Italian government comes in and says, we're going to have a new lira, you're going to say, yeah, but you're not making out of my bloody euros. So you get this problem of capital flight within the common currency the minute you try this. 
Estimates that Simon Tilford, who's an economist and I did for this a few years ago, the Italians would probably de destroy between 40 to 50% of national wealth and national savings if they tried to exit the euro. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So basically, you're checked into the Hotel California and you find out you're in an, abu an abusive marriage.